Hi, it's Kristen and this is the There Are Ten But tag. The premise of this tag is based on that meme that like went around on online um, a while ago that you're like, this person's a 10, like a 10 out of 10, but there is this like objective problem <laughs> or they do have this thing going on so like a lot of it was to do with like fictional characters where you're like this person's a great character but they do have this massive character flaw <laughs> um so this is that but with books so <laughs> we have some questions some prompts this tag was created by connie reads and katie books um i have the questions written over here so if my eyesight's over here that is why so first up we have they're a 10 but they're over 500 pages long and for that i have the once and future witches by alex e harrow i really enjoyed this book it's about three sisters who grew up with like witchcraft in their family but then something really traumatizing happened in their past and they all sort of went their own ways they gave up witchcraft um but they've all been drawn back together to this one location and get back into their witchcraft and get back into their familial relationship even though they've got got a lot of tension between them and it's just about them and their sisterhood and the sisterhood they create with the women around them in the town that they're living and the sort of men who are trying to take them down. This one was great, I really enjoyed it. Um, it is 513 pages long I believe, so just over 500 pages. Um, but I think those 500 pages are like well worth it. I think the pacing of this book is pretty good. You get all three sisters perspectives. They all feel very fleshed out so the 500 pages are definitely worth it in my opinion. Um, this just felt very tense. There were moments in it that are slower and the story sort of takes its time and then you hit points in it where there's a lot of like built up tension coming to like a climax. It's all very like go 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 action. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this one. And this one actually sort of leads me on to the next <laughs> prompt, which is there are 10, but they're on pre-order. And for me, that is Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. So this book convinced me to try Alex E. Harrow again. I didn't have any question about trying Alex E. Harrow again. Um, so I've pre-ordered the paperback of Starling House, um, which I have heard mixed things about, but I also heard mixed things about this and I really liked it. So I'm hoping I will like Starling House. Starling House is said to be very like gothic, which I'm totally here for. Sounds right up my alley. Um, I... <laughs> only heard about like the vibes of Starling House before I was just like yeah I'm gonna read it and so I didn't really look too much into the plot so let's do that together now. <laughs> I know that it does like sound interesting to me definitely um, but I couldn't off the top of my head tell you what it's about. So we have uh, Eden in Kentucky is just another dying bad luck town known only for the legend of E. Starling the reclusive 19th century author and illustrator who wrote The Underland and disappeared. Before she vanished, Starling House appeared. Everyone agrees it's best to let the uncanny house and its last lonely heir, Arthur Starling, go to rot. Opal knows better than to mess with haunted houses or brooding men. But an unexpected job offer might be a chance to get her brother out of Eden too. Too quickly though, Starling House starts to feel dangerously like something she's never had, a home. As sinister forces converge on Starling House, Opal and Arthur are going to have to make a dire choice to dig up the buried secrets of the past and confront their own fears or let Eden be taken over by literal nightmares. If Opal wants a home, she'll have to fight for it. This just sounds really interesting to me. I 
love the way that Alex E. Harrow writes women. She writes such complex female characters. So this Opal character I'm very intrigued by. Um, and the gothic setting, the like haunted house. I love that in stories in general. Um, and this Arthur Starling character, if he and Opal have like a bit of a romance, I'm always here for a romantic subplot. So yeah, I'm very excited. So that's a 10, but it's on pre-order. I won't get it until October. Next we have, they're a 10, but they're a red flag. And for me, that is Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. Um, this is a red flag, I guess you could say, in terms of like the actual content of the story. Um, it's about a young woman who has an affair with an older married man. Um, so that's a red flag. <laughs> um, and then Sally Rooney's characters generally, I find relatable often like her young women. There's definitely elements that I find very relatable, uh, hit quite close to home. But the way that a lot of her characters talk and the things they discuss, um, I do think come across sometimes as quite pretentious. Um, so that's also a red flag, I guess. In real life, I would be like, ugh, this person's pretentious. Um, and then also, I guess, in terms of Sally Rooney's writing style, she is not for everyone because she does not use speech marks in her writing in any of her books. So you just get them saying like, she said, he said, or like inferred dialogue. Um, but there, there are no um, quotation speech marks, anything like that. So for all those reasons, I can understand why Sally Rooney and this book in particular are red flags, but I loved this book. On the surface, doesn't seem like something I would enjoy remotely. I really hate like cheating plot lines. And so why is one of my favourite books about a woman who has an affair with a married man? I can't answer that, but I loved it. So it's a 10, but it is a red flag. <laughs> Next we have, there are 10, but they're over 100 years old. This isn't really a but for me because <laughs> I love classics. I love a lot of classics. I'm not one of those people that is like scared by classics but regardless we're going with Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This is about four sisters Meg, Joe, Beth and Amy who live at home with their mum. Their dad is off um, fighting the war and it's just about their lives and how they spend their time at home and in their community and they befriend their neighbour, an elderly gentleman, and his young nephew, grandson? <laughs> I can't remember quite which it is. Um, but yeah, Laurie uh, comes into their life and it's just about their sisterhood, their friendships, their relationships. Um, this has always been like a really comforting story to me. I really enjoyed the adaptations of it that I've seen. Um, I read the first part of this like Little Women a couple of years ago and then finished the second part of it Good Wives um last year because the editions I had before I got this edition um they were split into two because it was originally published as Little Women and Good Wives um and my mum had Little Women but her copy of Good Wives has gone missing don't know where it was so I only read <laughs> the first part of it um but then I got this copy last year, which has both parts. Um, and yeah, it's been like bound up into one. I really love the story of Little Women. It just, oh, it just fills me with a sense of like, just like cozy, heartfelt, like love. It's really cute. There's some very sad bits, <laughs> um, but yeah, I really like Little Women. I highly recommend it if you're someone who like, hasn't read a ton of classics, like wants to get into classics, I think it's quite a readable classic. Um, so yeah, this woman is, they're a 10, but they're over a hundred years old. Then we have, they're a 10, but they were studied in school. And for me, that is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. There are several 
books and texts and things I studied in school because I did English as everyone has to up to a certain point and then I continued doing English um, at A level and I actually did um, sort of I, well, I can't remember what it was called like advanced English where I from like year eight onwards was doing English a level above myself so when like the rest of my peers were doing their English um, GCSE I was doing my AS level and when they were doing AS level I was doing my A2 um, with a small group of other people um, and Northanger Abbey was one of the texts we studied in uh, A2 so like the full A level um, I really liked this one a lot of people in the class didn't but this is I think my favorite classic I studied at school um, some of the other classics were a bit hit and miss but this is definitely a favorite I had read Jane Austen anyway from like <laughs> when I was younger my mum loves Jane Austen so I started reading Jane Austen when I was in like year eight year nine um, and I'd read a few Jane Austen by the time I got to Northanger Abbey so I knew I already liked Jane Austen and then the teacher said we were studying Northanger Abbey and I was so excited <laughs> um, this is about a young woman called Catherine who is invited by some family friends to go to Bath with them and she's like always been a homebody she's always been at home always been in her like little uh, village never really done anything with her life um, never had the chance to so here she's presented with a chance to go to Bath in like a bustling city and so she goes with them she meets some friends who are they really friends is there something else going on there are they more manipulative um she meets a young man called Henry Tilney and his sister who's really lovely and she befriends them and you know sort of falls for Henry Tilney and I find Catherine such a fun character she's very into gothic novels and so she then starts to like let her imagination run wild <laughs> and uh, when uh, General Tilney invites her to accompany him and his children back to Northanger Abbey she jumps at the chance but then yeah her imagination sort of gets the better of her and she goes a little uh, too intense on <laughs> her gothic fantasies it's social commentary bit of romance young woman out in the world for the first time I really love Northanger Abbey and the 2007 adaptation of it um, with Felicity Jones and JJ Field is like one of my all-time top tier period drama adaptations not even like Jane Austen just of all time I love that so if you're not like a big classics reader try watching an adaptation see if you like it um but yeah this one I love there are 10 but I read it in school but I did still enjoy it and lastly there are 10 but they leave you with emotional damage and for me that is the good girl's guide to murder series good girl's guide to murder I read uh one year and borrowed it from the library read it really enjoyed it so when the second book came out I wanted to read it straight away so I bought it and bought the first book so I had the collection and then when the third book came out I like pre-ordered that and got it and oh my goodness so this is about uh a young girl teenager called Pip who decides for a school project she's going to look at like a <laughs> true crime case in her uh neighborhood and there was this uh girl who was a few years above her in school who was murdered uh or disappeared several years ago and they arrested a young man for it her boyfriend um but Pip doesn't think that that boy actually did it or she thinks there's more to the case so she decides to look into it herself and gets the brother of the uh, suspect um, sort of along for the ride 
and they investigate the case. That's what happens in book one. Book two is looking at a different case and then book three is looking at a different case again until you get halfway through and then it just goes in such a different direction. Um, or it, I mean there is like a natural progression to it. It does sort of feel like well we were always leading here but it is also like oh my god I can't believe Holly Jackson just did that. Um, but throughout this is filled with like <laughs> female rage, injustice. So there are some moments in this that do emotional damage in like a oh that was really sweet or oh I love like Pick and Ravi together like hurts my heart kind of way and then there are points that do emotional damage in a I'm so angry <laughs> at the plot at the characters um or there's like so much tension but as a whole like this trilogy I think is an incredible young adult mystery crime thriller there are like mixed media elements in here as well which is always fun there's like podcast excerpts or like files notes like photographs um the audiobooks for this are also really good i've read this trilogy physically once and then listened to it on audiobook once through um and enjoyed both formats so if you want to read this but you're an audiobook kind of person audiobook's great if you want to read it but you're a physical kind of person physical books are great i just think this trilogy for someone who's like sort of stepped away from YA um this still like absolutely grips me I think Holly Jackson's a brilliant mystery writer um but yeah this this series packs a punch for sure and that is it for this tag uh what would your answers be or do you have any like prompts that you would add to this or think would be interesting for there are 10 but um, let me know in the comments below and I will see you soon with another video. Bye!